Okay, everyone, let's go ahead and start off with section 29H, which is the standard normal distribution. So notice that yesterday we talked about, or I should say the previous section, we talked about just the normal distribution. But now we're going to be talking about the standard normal distribution. And there's a very important difference that you're going to have to realize. Now, the standard normal distribution is one of the different types of normal distribution curves that you have. So, when we talked about all of those key characteristics of the normal distribution curve, that will also apply to the standard normal distribution curve, except for there's a certain amount of detail that has to be in place in order for a normal distribution curve to be considered a standard normal distribution curve. So let's go ahead and see what those differences are. Uh, if we take a look, say for example, at the normal distribution curve, remember that we said that our continuous random variable is going to be described by the value x, by the variable x. We also know that the mean was something that was a positive number. And we said that the standard deviation was also a positive number. Now, if we were to go ahead and talk about the standard normal distribution, oftentimes called the Z distribution, you're going to note that the continuous random variable that you will be using is not X, but Z. If you're dealing with the standard normal distribution curve, the mean is always zero. And in addition to that, the standard deviation is always 1. Okay? Now, I went ahead and I passed along to you uh, some information on the internet regarding the standard normal distribution curve and how that is similar to the normal distribution curves. Uh, it's one of those Mathematica links, so you need to go ahead and take a look at that so that you can see what the differences are. Okay, now, remember that when we actually calculated certain things, like let's go ahead and go back to our example here. We said that, yes, we said in the previous section, what if you had a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 4? Well, obviously we're talking about a normal distribution because we're dealing with the value of x, the mean is greater than 0, and the standard deviation is 1, and it doesn't apply to those things. So we know that this is a normal distribution and not a standard normal distribution. So what we did then is that in order to calculate, say for example, the probability that x is less than or equal to 45, again, notice that we're dealing with x, we're going to say that this was equal to 1.0564.49839. And the way that we did that was using our calculator. We said the normal CDF, we put in the lower bound, upper bound, the mean, and the standard deviation. We did the same thing for 2 and number 3. So these are all the same things that we had from before. Now, what's the difference if we go ahead and talk about the standard normal distribution? Well, if we wanted to use our calculator, if we know we're dealing with the standard normal distribution curve, we don't have to put 1, 0 for this part here because of the fact that it, for all standard normal distribution curves, those are always the same values. So we can actually omit it, and we can just go ahead and put the lower and the upper bounds. And we will come up with exactly these values. Now, how do we go about doing that? And this is what happens. By standardizing a normal distribution, we can use the, table, the Z distribution table of values to calculate the probabilities of a normal distribution. So remember, yes, in the previous section, I asked, how do you actually do this if you don't have a calculator? Well, we still need to have the table of values but you need to be able to convert your normal distribution variable to a standard normal distribution variable first before you can then go ahead and use the Z distribution uh, table of values to calculate probabilities. So let's go ahead and see how we do that. Now the key is that you have to remember this conversion here. The conversion says that your continuous random variable for the standard normal distribution, which is z, is going to be equal to x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation of your normal distribution curve. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply it to some of these problems here, where we've already gone about talking about uh, in the previous section.
Okay, so let's go ahead and just take a look at this particular value, in which we said the probability that x is less than or equal to 45. Now, if I wanted to use the table of values, the first thing that I have to do is I have to convert from the value of x, which is the normal distribution, to the value of z, which is a standard normal distribution continuous random variable. Now, how do I go about doing that? Well, it says right here, if I wanted to convert from this x to the z value, I need to then go ahead and take a look at what this z value would actually represent. So, I know that x in this case is going to be less than or equal to 45, so let's go ahead and take a look at x being 45 as the upper bound. Then what I can say then is that the associated or the standardized z value for this particular value here of 45 would be 45 minus the mean, which we know in this case is going to be 50, divided by the standard deviation in this case, which is 4. So notice that all of these values over here are dealing with your normal distribution values. And we're trying to determine what the standardized distribution value would be, and that would be a z value. So notice that what we come out with here, this would be negative 5 over 4, which is negative 5 over 4, which is going to be negative 1.25. Okay, so notice that what I've done then is I've actually changed this value here, which became our upper limit, and I've actually converted it to a z value. So what that means then is that this p value, which is s is less than or equal to 45, is exactly the same thing as the z value being less than or equal to negative 1.25. Okay? Now, if you go ahead and use your table of values, you can then go ahead and determine that yes, in fact, it will be equivalent to this value that we showed last section. And if you wanted to put this into your calculator, all we need to do then is just to do the normal C, oops, sorry, CDF of the lower bound, which is of course going to be negative 10 to the 10 power, comma, and the upper bound, and this of course would be the upper bound, negative 1.25, and if you put that into your calculator, you will come up with exactly this same value. So we can do the same thing for all of these values here. Let's just do it once more for this next problem. So this next problem says that we have the probability that x is going to be greater than or equal to 51. Now we want to standardize this, so we need to change it to the z value, the z continuous random variable. We need to use this conversion here. So I'm talking about the lower bound this time, which is going to be 51, minus the mean, which I know is going to be 50, divided by the standard deviation, which I know is going to be 4. So I know that this is going to be 1 fourth, which is going to be 0.25. So notice what I've done now is I've again changed this z, this x value, and standardized it to this corresponding z value. So what happens then is we talk about the probability that z is going to be greater than or equal to 0.25, and I will come up with exactly the same probability that I have over here. So if we wanted to put that again into your calculator, distribution function, the lower bound, of course, is going to be 0.25, and the upper bound is going to be 10 raised to the 10 power. Okay, and if I do that, again, I will come up with exactly this value here, and of course, if I wanted to, I could also go ahead and use the table of values. Okay, so if you wanted to do it for number three as well, you could do it for number three, and you would come out with exactly the same values here for this particular value. Now, again, what is the point? Just be careful, is that if you don't have your calculator, in order for you to calculate any probabilities of a normal distribution, you first need to standardize it so that you can use your table of values to calculate those probabilities. Okay, everybody, good luck, and see you next time. <clears throat>